H R C R C H R C H R C R C H R C Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Shout out to the Talon family. We greet you at Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zachwa, and this is your brother, Kasafo. We have a great lesson for you. We hope that everybody got to see the part one of identifying the tribe of Levi lesson. And this is the part two, overcoming anger and wrath. So without further ado, we hope that everybody been enjoying their Sabbath day. We thank Alahayim for allowing us to partake in the Feast of Tabernacles. This is Tabernacles of 2021. And may Ahaya be gracious toward us. Uh, Brother Kasafo? Praise Ahaya. Hope you all enjoying the feast. You ready to go? Ready to go. All right. If you'd like, you can visit the website on the uh, Doctrine Video Notes tab. Where you can get the PDF notes for the lesson. You just have to find the thumbnail that matches the lesson, and they'll have a PDF download button right on the side for the notes, so it can help follow along better. We touched on some of the struggles that Levi faces, and now let's continue to touch on Levi's major issue. Can you read Genesis 49 and 7, please? Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. Anger and wrath. Can you read the definition of anger, please? Eight six three nine. Properly, the nose or nostril. Hence, the face, and occasionally a person. Also, from the rapid breathing and passion, I. You will see a Levite boiling up inside with heavy breathing. That breathing, you'll find that. Continue, please. Anger or angry before countenance, face, forbearing. It works both ways, though, because controlling our breathing also helps stay temperate and be forbearing. Continue, please. Forehead, long, long suffering. See, controlling your breathing can aid you in the fruits of the spirit. Or it can also be a sign of us given over to the spirit of anger. Continue, please. Nose, nostril, snout, worthy, wrath. All right, can you read the definition for wrath? H5678. An outburst of passion, anger, rage, wrath. Some Levites hold in anger until it boils over and then they'll blow up. Notice also it's an outburst of passion. Passion means a strong feeling or emotion, so it doesn't actually have to be anger for it to be an attack to these spirits. Let's get a look at the Greek definition of anger. Can you read G3709, please? Properly desire, as a reaching forth or excitement of the mind. We just talked about envy and self-will in the last lesson in that first video. All these spirits inspire anger. And notice the definition also said excitement of mind. So the anger isn't only fury to fight per se, but it's more so getting into emotions, which excites the mind to help understand how anger can work against Levi. Being a touchy person, for example, wherein anything someone says gets you easily upset or easily worked up or offended whether unto anger or sadness or sorrow or offense. These are examples of how anger is working against us. Continue, please. That is violent passion. A Levite may think he is a real passionate person when it's really our intemperance causing us to fall into our emotions. Continue, please. Irie or justifiable 
abhorrence, by implication punishment, anger, indignation, vengeance, wrath. The third definition really helps understand how the anger is really when we fall out of temperance into different emotions. Can you read the Thea, please? Moment or agitation of the soul. Once our soul is bothered by any emotion, we have to be on guard not to fall into the wrong spirit. Continue, please. Impulse, desire. That self-will going after our desire can get us into the wrong spirit as well. Continue, please. Any violent emotion, but especially anger. There we see it's about getting into emotions, period, not merely anger. Let's get scriptural confirmation that getting into our feelings brings about anger. Can you read Testament of Dan, chapter 4, verse 6, please? And if you suffer a loss voluntarily or involuntarily, be not vexed, for from vexation ariseth wrath with lying. Vexation is the state of being annoyed, frustrated, or worried. You can see how we have to stay out of our feelings because getting vexed, it isn't merely getting angry, it's getting worried, frustrated, or annoyed. So getting into emotions in general affects us. And from that vexation comes wrath with light. Now let's get some understanding on how anger works from Dan, who dealt with it, to know what we are facing and what we have to be on guard against. Can you read the Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 2 to 5, and then chapter 3 through 5, please? Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 2. For anger is blindness, and does not suffer one to see the face of any man with truth. Once a Levite gets into emotions, we can't see clearly, and it causes us to think unrighteously. Continue, please. For though it be a father or a mother, he behaveth towards them as enemies. Though it be a brother, he knoweth him not. Though it be a prophet of the Lord, he disobeyeth him. Though a righteous man, he regardeth him not. Though a friend, he doeth not acknowledge him. You see how anger pushes everyone away? You'll find that Levites don't keep many friends because their social skills are lacking when struggling with anger and we easily rub people the wrong way. Continue, please. For the spirit of anger encompasseth him with the net of deceit and blindeth his eyes and through lying darkeneth his mind and giveth him its own peculiar vision. Levites already struggle with self-will, wanting what we want. Then now we see Levites struggle with being justified in our own eyes through anger blinding our minds through the lies we are hearing in our mind to think we are seeing things rightly according to our own view of the situation. This makes it hard to persuade a Levite to see things in truth when he is in his feelings. This is why Levi has to focus on what's right in the sight of Allah in his simplicity to avoid evil thoughts that come to us, lying to persuade us otherwise. Let's see how we get blinded by this false reality anger brings about. Continue, please. And wherewith incompetent it his eyes, with hatred of heart, so as to be envious of his brother. So anger works with hatred to lead unto that envy that Simeon admonished them, causes anger. Then anger blinds our eyes with the net of deceit. Can you read Simeon, Testament of Simeon chapter 4, verse 8, please? It uh, causeth anger and war in the mind, and stirreth up unto deeds of blood, and leadeth the mind into frenzy, and suffereth not prudence to act in men. Hopefully this helps understand how these evil spirits help each other to get us to fall. The hatred of heart gives place to envy. And the envy brings about anger to disturb the mind and blind the eye with the net of deceit. And all this causes Levi not to deal in prudence and to operate in cruelty or immoral behavior. Yet it was anger that caused the hatred of heart to get us there in the first place. Case in point, the chief priests against Christ is an example to confirm this book is true because they were in their feelings at the attention he was getting. And through hatred of heart, they envied him. 
and gave into anger unto deeds of blood to get him killed. Anger is a tough spirit to be in. Can you read Testament to Dan, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, please? For anger is an evil thing, my children, for it troubleth even the soul itself. And the body of the angry man it maketh his own, and over his soul it getteth the mastery, and it bestoweth upon the body power that it may work all iniquity. Getting upset or in our feeling gives anger power to work all iniquity in us. And as you see, it troubleth the soul itself. So we talked about how Levi struggled with the depression or anxiety or sorrow. And it takes over the soul. It gives the mastery of the soul of a man. So you'll find that a Levite, we, we struggle with anger to the point where like, it's almost like we're always upset or looking for opportunity to be upset ready to jump i guess touch is the term like ready to react to a situation see how this anger it's something we really have to stand aloof from because it's really affecting us in a bad way can you read proverbs 29 verse 22 please angry man stirs up strife and a furious man aboundeth in transgression you see how the anger it gets the dominion over us and just keeps us falling because we're not in the fruits and it doesn't allow us to be in it because it, it doesn't mix as we're going to learn. Can you read Sirach chapter 1 verse 22 please? A furious man cannot be justified for the sway of his fury shall be his destruction. In anger we can't be justified by the faith in Christ. Hopefully this helps understand this and we really have to overcome. And take heed to the admissions against because this very spirit is keeping us from our salvation. Can you read Testament of Dan chapter 3, verse 3 to 6, please? And when the body does all these things, the soul justifieth what is done, since it seeth not aright. That's the self-justification that Levites struggle with when in our emotions. You'll find Levites harp on the reasons they acted the way they acted and struggle to see or admit we did something wrong because anger justifies what was done and we can't see things right. Sally through pride as well. We don't want to be wrong. So that doesn't help either. But when just and humble, we can be objective about situations and see a right because we just want to be sure we haven't done wrong in the sight of Allah Continue, please. Therefore, he that is wrathful, if he be a mighty man, hath a threefold power in his anger, one by the help of his servants, and a second by his wealth, whereby he persuadeth and overcometh wrongfully, and thirdly, having his own natural power, he worketh thereby the evil. See how it's also anger as an instrument of cruelty, overcoming wrongfully, working within us. The Levites in anger would use what they have, like servants or wealth, to get what they want in self-will, no matter what it does to others. As was the case with the chief priests, they paid Judas to betray Christ for their gain and felt no remorse when he tried to give the money back. Now Judas was already angry when the ointment was poured upon the Lord, and he thought to deal cruelly with the Lord out of envy. Can you read Testament of Dan, chapter 3, verse 5, please? And though the wrathful man be weak, yet have he a power twofold of that which is by nature. For wrath even aideth such in lawlessness. Now we see how wrath ever aideth in lawlessness. Now we get understanding of what causes Levi to be lawless. It's not that Levites don't keep any law at all, though. The lawlessness is that Levites go according to our desire in self-will and what's right in our eyes to make our own righteousness, not submitting to the will of Allah and his righteousness. So unfortunately, we become lawless having established our own law, as you've seen in the case of the Pharisees, who told a man if he would take from his parents and give it unto them, it's korban, which means a gift while casting aside the law that says, honor thy father and thy mother. Levi struggled with being justified in our own sight while doing all this. Because we can't see a right 
we are clouded by being in our emotions through anger blinding the eyes. Deceit giving us our own view and envy ruling our minds to make us savage. Levites had to submit themselves to the righteousness of Allah to overcome this and by doing what's right in his sight in simplicity instead of adding or taking away from the commands through how we feel because our mind is susceptible to lies when we are in our feelings. Verse 6 of Testament of Dan, chapter 3, please. This spirit goeth always with lying at the right hand of Satan, that with cruelty and lying his works may be wrought. Levites struggle with lying as well to assist in cruelty. Lying by hearkening to wicked spirits in the mind, lying to ourselves, and actually lying to people as well. Hermas is a good example because he confessed his issues with lying. Some Levites just want what they want through self-will and will lie to get it. Like the chief priest said, we have no king but Caesar in John 19 in their desire to kill Christ. Then some Levites, once they get in their feelings or flustered, they'll lie to save face or get what they want. For example, Judas lied of his true intent for the perfume because he wanted the money as an example of how they can deceive when seeming righteous, but not being honest. Once Levites get in their emotions, they have a high chance of lying to hide their true feelings. Peter is a good example of how getting in anger leads Levites to lie. When he denied knowing Yache three times because he was nervous, being vexed also caused Moses and Aaron to speak falsely in the book of Numbers at Meribah Kadesh. Levi has to stay in temperance to think clearly and speak sincerely. Hopefully you see how hatred of heart works with envy to stir up anger unto wrath. To work with lying. To make us cruel and workers of Satan works. Can you read Testament of Dan chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 please? Understand ye therefore the power of wrath, that it is vain. For first of all, giveth provocation by word. Unbelieving Levites can be irascible or touchy, wherein you can't say anything they don't want to hear. Or if you say a wrong word, they'll be vexed. Remember, Levites issues within, so just because they don't say anything doesn't mean they didn't react and get in their feelings. They may just say it in their minds. Some can't control themselves and have to respond, while some let you say what you have to say. But in their mind? Within, they already have their own thoughts and their mind made up. While some let you say what you want, and while their mind's set, they aren't paying you any attention. While some hold their tongue till it boils up and they have an outburst at some point down the line. Continue, please. For first of all, give us provocation by word, then by deeds it strengtheneth him who is angry, and with sharp losses disturbeth his mind. You see how Levi goes through the struggle within? It's in our minds, hence we may seem good on the outside, but within there's a war in the mind. Continue, please. And so stir up with great wrath his soul. See how it leads to sorrow? of the mind or depression is just working us and just beating us down until we're in our feelings. The mind is disturbed and the soul is stirred up in wrath. Also, Levi may not react initially, but the attack in the mind can lead Levi to revisit what happened in our minds and get stirred up at a later time. Thankfully, there are admonitions for us to overcome and be delivered from the issues with wrath and anger. Can you read Testament of Dan, chapter 4, verse 3 to 7, please? Therefore, when anyone speaketh against you, be not ye moved to anger. And if any man praiseth of you as holy men, be not uplifted. Be not moved either to delight or to disgust. Compliments or reproaches. It can work against us either way if we get too into any emotion. So we have to be mindful of both and stay temperate regardless and even keel. Continue, please. For first it pleaseth the hearing, and so maketh the mind keen to perceive the ground for provocation. 
See how anger uses what we hear to find grounds for provocation to anger? Levites struggle with taking things to heart or taking things personal, and anger can easily get us stirred up when we are touchy. Continue, please. And then being enraged, he thinketh that he is justly angry. This is how it happens. Just off of a word. And remember, it's within, so it may not be something, they may not literally show it. Dan explained how anger would look for provocation by a word, then blind our mind through the net of deceit, not to see right. Then when it gets us to give in to anger, it fools us to think we're justly angry. And we further transgress being self-justified. You'll find Levites tend to give some excuse to justify our feelings instead of just confessing the fault. Some solutions to these struggles for anger are the following. Can you read Testament of Dan chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, please? If you fall into any loss or ruin, my children, be not afflicted. Don't get in our feelings or stressing or worrying or vexed. Continue, please. For this very spirit maketh the man to desire that which is perishable, in order that he may be enraged through the affliction. It's all a setup, because anger also makes a man covet perishable things in order to be enraged. Continue, please. And if ye suffer loss voluntarily or involuntarily, be not vexed, for from vexation ariseth wrath with lying. See how getting in our feelings can cause wrath to arise with lying? Not just getting angry, per se. Hopefully, we understand how getting in feelings can be to our detriment. To help for a change of mindset, a Levite himself, Barnabas, gives some sound advice. Can you read Barnabas chapter 19, verse 6, please? The accidents that befall thee shalt thou receive as good, knowing that nothing is done without Elohim. That's a great mindset when accidents happen. Let's continue the admonitions against wrath. Dan, chapter 4, verse 7, please. Moreover, a twofold mischief is wrath with lying. And they assist one another in order to disturb the heart. Notice these spirits are working against us within our hearts. Hence, it may seem like we're good, but inwardly there's a battle. This also confirms Levi's struggle with lying as well, as we mentioned earlier. Continue, please. And when the soul is continually disturbed, the Lord departed from it, and Belier ruleth over it. The thoughts that come from wrath and lying in our minds are working to keep us disturbed in soul and in our feelings, for layman's terms, so that Belier will get to rule over our soul to sin. Anyone can see the struggles with envy, self-will, anger, pride, and wickedness inspiring anxiety, sorrow, or depression within Levi. It's hard to do good works because Belia is ruling over us when we aren't in the right mindset and emotional state. Thankfully, there is edification on how to overcome angry temper. Can you read Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 5, please? Be thou long suffering and understanding, he saith, and thou shalt have the mastery over all evil deeds and shalt work all righteousness. For if Amen. thou art long suffering, the Holy Spirit that abideth in thee shall be pure, not being darkened by another evil spirit, but dwelling in a large room shall rejoice and be glad with the vessel in which she dwelleth, and shall serve Allah with much cheerfulness, having prosperity. Excuse me, having prosperity. Yeah, prosperity in herself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's important for us. Just being long-suffering and understanding does a whole lot. Thankfully, the overcoming of anger is a simple task. Well, it's not a simple task because you got to work out your salvation. It takes work and experience. But the admonitions aren't lengthy. It's very simple what we have to do. It's a simple solution. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Carefulness is essential for Levi. Keeping a thankful mind unto Allah helps overcome the spiritual attacks, being positive about things in an optimistic attitude. Continue, please. But if any angry temper approach, 
Forthwith the Holy Spirit, being delicate, is straightened, not having the place clear, and seeketh to retire from the place. For she is being choked by the evil spirit, and has no room to minister unto the Lord, as she desireth, being polluted by angry temper. For the Lord dwelleth in long suffering, but the devil in angry temper. Thus that both the spirits then should be dwelling together is inconvenient and evil for that man in whom they dwell. For if you take a little wormwood and pour it into a jar of honey, is not the whole of the honey spoiled and all that honey ruined by a very small quantity of wormwood? For it destroys the sweetness of the honey and it no longer hath the same attraction for the owner because it is rendered bitter and hath lost its use. But if the wormwood be not put into the honey, the honey is found sweet and becomes useful to its owner. Thou seest that long suffering is very sweet, beyond the sweetness of honey, and is useful to the Lord, and he dwelleth in it. But angry, temper is bitter and useless. If then angry temper be mixed with long suffering, long suffering is polluted, and the man's intercession is no longer useful to Elohim. That's why we have to be single-minded, not dissembling in our hearts between anger and long-suffering, because it hinders us. Continue, please. I would fain know, sir, say I, the working of angry temper, that I may guard myself from it. Yea, verily, saith he, if thou guard not thyself from it, thou and thy family, thou hast lost all thy hope. Hermas is a Levite, so it's no surprise he wanted to know more about this to be on God. And men? Our actions actually affect our family as well. So this fight to overcome these spirits isn't for ourselves alone. Continue, please. But guard thyself from it, for I am with thee. Yea, and all men shall hold aloof from it, as many as have repented with their whole heart. It takes wholehearted repentance to have the angels help. Continue, please. For I will be with them and will preserve them, for they all were justified by the most holy angel. Belief in Yahweh for justification by faith grants us preservation by the angel of repentance with his help, if we be wholehearted. Continue, please. Here now, saith he. The working of angry temper, how evil it is, how it subverteth the service of Elohim by his own working, how it leadeth them astray from righteousness. But it doeth not lead astray them that are full in the faith, nor can it work upon them, because the power of the Lord is with them. But them that are empty and double-minded, it leadeth astray. The struggle with anger lets us know we aren't full in the faith and still have growing to do. If we still struggle with envy, self-will, pride, and such, that double mind will leave us open to anger. Levi struggles with double-mindedness through these spirits. This double mind causes us to be lukewarm or hypocrites like the Pharisees. Can you continue, please? For when a sea of such men in prosperity, it insinuates itself into the heart of the man. And for no cause, whatever the man or the woman is embittered, on account of worldly matters, either about meats or some triviality, or about some friend, or about giving or receiving, or about follies of this kind. For all these things are foolish and vain and senseless and inexpedient for the servants of Elohim. This aligns with Dan's admonitions when he said anger seeks to make us covet things that are perishable, just to stir us up. Continue, please, bro. But long suffering is great and strong. It hath a mighty and vigorous power, and it prospers in great enlargement. These are the spirits we have to abide in, in our walk. Go ahead, please. Glassome, exultant, free from care, glorifying the Lord at every season, having no bitterness in itself, remaining always gentle and tranquil. This long-suffering therefore dwelleth with those whose faith is perfect. So when believing Levites have reached perfection in faith, you'll find the Levites will be gladsome, exultant, free from care, glorifying the Lord all the time, not bitter within about anything, and always gentle and tranquil, walking in long suffering and being understanding. But the Lord Yahshua do it. Through anger, you'll find Levites struggle with being moody instead of gladsome, 
worrisome instead of free from care because of our faith in Allah Hayyam. And sadly, struggling with bitterness, holding grudges, being resentful or unforgiving or not letting go of situations or events that happened before. In self-assessment, one may think they don't have an anger issue, but the struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness actually stems from anger or hatred, which anger is using as a minister unto itself. Continue, please. But angry temper is the first place foolish, fickle, and senseless. Then from foolishness it engendereth bitterness, and from bitterness wrath, and from wrath anger, and from anger spite, then spite being composed of all these evil elements becometh a great sin and incurable. When Levi is too far gone in anger, we become calculating, spiteful, and malicious. A Levi will plot on you. Just like the chief priest plotted with Judas to kill Yache, and Judas plotted seeking an opportunity to betray him. Remember the struggle is within us, so a Levite may just think of doing malicious things, though they won't act on it. Continue, please. For when all these spirits dwell in one vessel, the Holy Spirit also dwelleth, that vessel cannot contain them, but overfloweth. The delicate spirit, therefore, as not being accustomed to dwell with an evil spirit, nor with harshness, Departeth from a man of that kind, and seeketh to dwell with gentleness and tranquility. Being gentle and tranquil can keep us at peace within, not being overcome. Now know what type of person the spirits seek to dwell with. Hopefully, we be persuaded to walk in these spirits. Continue, please. Then when it hath removed from that man in whom it dwells, that man becometh emptied of the righteous spirit. And henceforward, being filled with the evil spirits, he is unstable in all his actions, being dragged about hither and thither by the evil spirits, and is altogether blinded and bereaved of his good intent. Thus then it happeneth to all persons of angry temper. Understanding this helps see how Levi struggles with irascibility and hastiness through anger. We might have started off trying to do good, but due to the evil inclination of mind that Asher spoke about, our good intent will be turned to evil. You'll find Levi to be unstable in all his actions. We'll struggle to be consistent in any manner. We'll be inconsistent in doing good or inconsistent in the things in all in things altogether. In our normal life, you might find we start on doing something and before you know it, we're doing something else or we didn't finish the thing that we started. This affects our walk because we can do well for a time, but then we'll fall due to the struggle with angry temper and the other instruments of cruelty. Continue, please. Refrain therefore from angry temper, the most evil of evil spirits, but clothe thyself in long suffering and resist angry temper and bitterness, and thou shalt be round in company with the holiness which is beloved of the Lord. There we see anger is the most evil of evil spirits. This is why it looks like our father Jacob harped on that anger and wrath issue more than anything else. So hopefully we see, we through these lessons, we get understanding of what we're facing, how important it is to overcome these things through faith. And the temptation would continue to come, but now we have the cures to deliver us from it. Continue, please. See then that thou never neglect this commandment. For if thou master this commandment, thou shalt be able likewise to keep the remaining commandments which I am about to give thee. Be strong in them, and endowed with power. And let's all be endowed with power, as many as desire to walk in them. For well, Levi, this, what this angel said is real. If we can keep this commandment, we can master this one we'll be able to keep the remaining commandments. Let's continue to get Dan's exhortation to overcome our struggles. Testament of Dan, chapter two, verse one, and chapter five, verse one to three, please. Testament of Dan, chapter two, verse one. And now my children, behold, I am dying. And I tell you of a truth that unless you keep yourself from the spirit of lying and of anger and love truth and long suffering, you shall perish. See, we have to avoid that lying and anger. 
And truth and long suffering is going to save us just as the angel of repentance said. So we have two witnesses that these things are true. Remember, wrath works with lying. So we have to abstain from both by loving truth and being long suffering so we don't perish. Continue, please. This is the chapter Testament five. of Dan, chapter 5, verse 1. Observe, therefore, my children, the commandment of the Lord, and keep his law. Depart from wrath and hate lying, that the Lord may dwell among you, and barely air may flee from you. Speak truth, each one, with his neighbor. In truth, we speak in love and grace season with salt, and using discretion to speak in due season. Speaking in anger or in our emotions isn't speaking truth or just telling somebody how we feel. Every time it isn't the right time to say something. Right? Uh, continue, please. So shall ye not fall into wrath and confusion, but ye shall be in peace, having an Elohim of peace. So shall no war prevail over you. Hopefully we see how important it is to speak truth with our neighbors and to depart from wrath and hate lying. This will keep us from wrath and confusion. And notice this will bring peace within us so as not to be disturbed or frustrated having Allah within us to deliver us from these spirits that attack us. Continue, please. Love the Lord through all your life and one another with a true heart. Operating a true heart is key for us. So let what we do and speak be genuine and sincere in temperance, avoiding being upset or in our feelings as we do it. That true heart helps overcome the inner cruelty. So in the next lesson, we'll get into the Testament of Levi to hear the words of our father and his words for us. Hope this was edifying and helps identify who you are and also helps identify what's going on and how to overcome for the children of Levi and for anyone who may have issues with anger. Zach, why anything? Uh, yeah, great lesson. Um, let's go ahead and pray out, and then we yeah. will um, we hope you guys catch the next lesson um, on identifying the tribe of Levi part three. All right. You want to pray? No, it don't make a difference. Go ahead, man. My voice been well. You've been reading. I'll go ahead and pray. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pray. All right. All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Thank you, Ahayala Hayam, for this feast day. And thank you for this edification, for the growth of all. And thank you for all that you're doing in our lives and your grace to give us remembrance of your feast and to give us joy coming back into your ways. Oh, Ahayala Hayam. We thank you for our Lord Yache, and we thank you for this edification and the growth that is happening in people's lives. And we pray all men come to the knowledge of the truth. And we pray we all escape the things to come and be worthy to stand before the Son of Man. In the name of our Lord Yache, we pray. Amen. All right. We hope everybody enjoyed the lesson, and uh, everybody enjoy the rest of your feast day. Ciao. Tchau. HRC, 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 HRC,